you know, we, we get the idea there must be, or some people get the idea, well, there must be other life in the universe, there must be aliens, because the universe is so vast. And I just wonder, you know, how vast is the universe compared to God? Because I believe God existed outside of it before he created the heavens and the earth, so um, possibly. Yeah. And, uh, and so maybe this deal we think is so grand is something sitting on a coffee table in God's heaven, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not all that. So anyway, that's just, just put it for thought. You know? Yeah, no, I actually I love I love that and so I have a thought on this just real quick so I I happen to believe that this is I, I think I was having a conversation with a, a guy that had a PhD in mathematics and I kind of frustrated him one day um, he got really angry at me he actually cussed at me um, I said I said so I said here's what I believe I said I believe that the universe is like a basketball and when you're inside the basketball, you can never reach the outside. It's just an attribute of being inside. You can't get to the end. But if you're outside the basketball, it's a basketball. You know, and, uh, and so I said, as a programmer, I can create objects where if you're inside the object, you can never get to the outside of it. Because I can say that the logic inside the object always cuts the distance in half. And so it continues to get more and more minuscule the further to the edge you get but you never touch the edge because it's impossible. If as a programmer I can create objects that are infinite on the inside but that I can control from the outside, why can't God? That's what he cussed at me and he got frustrated. Yeah. So. And, and then I had one other thought. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if it's James or uh, when you were, when you were talking about, I think it wasn't James. person that died and right up to the time of this person's death she told the she told the person that was witnessing to her that, that uh, well she told her she was delusional right to the end of her life um, she told this person that was a Christian you're good I thought about everything you said you're delusional and then a couple of days later she passed away so I don't know her eternal fate and I was in a place where she lay up and I, and I walked around a horse a lot that, I, well I walked the whole property brain because there was still a, a surviving husband alive and, uh, and I just, the Lord told me to just walk the whole property and pray. And so I did. And when I came down to the ground where this woman had trained horses, I, I broke down into tears and just wept because I could feel the love that she had for those horses there. And I knew that she was capable of love. I knew she was capable of giving love, and I knew she was capable of receiving love. But she had never, in my belief, received the love of Christ. But the Lord called me that day to pray for her. But she's gone from this world. So I, I don't know the fate, and I agree with what you say about our life being a bubble. Or a balloon that has popped, that's it. I agree with that, right? But also, in 2 Peter, it talks about when Christ, in, in 18 and 19, it talks about when, when after Christ redeemed us on the cross, then he went to the he went to hell and he spoke there to those who were formerly disobedient and once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through the water. So, again, this isn't scriptural, and I don't want to lead anybody into a false understanding of this, but uh, I just believe in Christ, in His... I believe in God that loved us enough to come and die on the cross for us. Yeah. Um, what would he go tell those people in hell? Well, you really missed it in here in hell. <laughs> Too bad for you. Or would he have told them? Maybe would he have told them, and I can't prove this one way or the other. Sure. But maybe would he have just said to them, 
I just died on the cross to forgive your sins. Um, yeah. And so, all that said, I've not been released to stop praying for this person. So I am you know, praying for her every day. And we. Yeah, the one scripture that you're talking about says he preached to those who, it says that he preached to them. So you have to imagine he was preaching the gospel. It has to be the good news, right? I, I wonder, you know, I thought, if you think about this, the person, you know, these people that died prior to Jesus' death, you know, you've got this guy, they've been down there. Some of those people have been in that holding pond for 2,000 years, 2,500 years, 3,000, 3,500 years. Who knows how many times they played solitaire during that time, right? Uh, and you get this guy that's a nut job that says, hey, follow me out. Right? I mean, you're, you've watched 3,000 years, 4,000 years of people show up where you are, and no one's got out yet. What makes, you, what makes me think that you're any different than anybody else? It would take faith. I mean, even, even in the lower earthly regions, even in that holding pond where people were, it would take faith to believe Jesus was who he said he was. It's not like him popping in and just saying, hey, I'm the son of God. Here I am. I'm going to get you out of here. It's believable. They would have to have faith. They would have to, you know. So yeah, I mean yeah, I agree. I and I and I wish that there was some way to know that. I mean, it would be nice if the Lord gave everybody a chance like that, even after the life now that we know, right? But anyway, it's all good stuff. Yeah, so many different thoughts there. Anybody else? Thoughts, questions, comments, interactions, anything at all? Nope. Anybody online? Bill, use Haley, Peter, Danny, Edie. Nope. Sherry, you're being quiet. Anything? <laughs> no? She's with this one coin here, man. What do you expect? <laughs> so, so just so you know, so this here, uh, this, I got some of these in the back, so you guys won't when you can take one. This is, this is the Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 that we just did in book form. So everything that we talked about for the last four weeks well, the Daniel stuff's not in here. I don't have Daniel in here. This is a couple of Daniel references. But the Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 stuff's here. So if you want to go through it more slowly, then you guys grab one of these before you leave. You can take it home with you if you want to. They're on Amazon. I probably, the Amazon, I made it as cheap as I could. I think they're $7.95 or $6.95 or something like that. So they're as low as I could make them on Amazon to make them available for people if they wanted to get them. But, um, does, does Dylan have that? Yeah, I sent it to him. As a matter of fact, he he was just, when we were writing the other day, he told me one of the guys had read it was looking for the next book when it came out. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it was Levi, maybe. It was Levi? Does that sound right? Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I think he had court today, by the way. Did he tell you that? Yeah. Yeah, that's frustrating. Anyways. Um, but anyways, it's on Amazon. Um, so if you want it, grab it. There's some back there for those of you that are here if you want it. So if nobody has a question, I think we're good. Or if you're in town here and you see me and you don't have one yet, let me know and I'll get one to you. I don't know, maybe if you guys... Dee Dee, did I send one to you yet? I don't remember if I did or not. You sure did. did I? Yeah. Okay, all right. If anybody needs one, let me know. And if nobody can afford it, don't let that stop. You just text me and message me and let me know and I'll send one to you. I'll just shoot it off. I'll have Amazon ship it your way, all right? All right, love you all. See you next week. Thank you, love you. You're welcome to you.